Hi, and welcome to Healthy Life Hacks. I'm Jennifer Jeffries, the present day wise woman, a realistic naturopath coming to you from the surfing beaches of Australia. This podcast is for those who are wanting to really rock their lives and health and live from a place of prevention. Let's get into today's episode. I get asked endlessly, endlessly, Jen, why do you have such clear skin? I'll be I will be 60 in five months, which is just insane to me. And I'm stoked that my, my body is really aging well and that my skin is a reflection of my inner health as well. So I'm here today, and this has to be broken up by two podcasts because there's too much information for just one podcast. So let's jump into it. So I'm going to talk about the seven steps to great skin. Now, this comes from a book that I published 20 odd years ago with a gorgeous friend and fellow aromatherapist. Helen Bairstow, who has sadly since passed. But I'm going to talk about the seven steps to great skin. And the seven steps are, one, well, it's all about protecting your skin. Number two, how to eliminate properly through your body. Three, how to renew your cells. Four, how to feed your skin properly from the inside. Step five, using essential oils for your skin. Step six, changing things constantly so your body doesn't get used to it. And step seven, how to avoid toxins in life. So let's jump into it. So step one is all about protecting. So I've got a question to ask first. What happens when you cut an apple? Think about it. What happens when you cut an apple? Well, it goes brown. Why did the apple go brown? Well, it's a result of the oxidization or what's called free radical damage of that apple. So question two is how do you prevent the apple going brown? Well, pretty simple. Take a step backwards. How do you protect the free form, free radical damage? Yes, I said that. How do you stop that free radical damage? And we do it if you're making a salad or something like that. You put on lemon juice. Why? Because lemon is an antioxidant. That's one of the things I'm going to talk about in this podcast today. So let's jump into it. So step one is all about reducing the impact of free radicals on our body and particularly on our skin. So let's get started. I want to talk about first up how to reduce that free radical impact because we can't escape free radicals. They're there all the time, but we want to be able to be lessening the impact of them on our skin. So the first one is, is about how you're cleansing your skin and you want to always use a pH balanced cleanser. And that's pretty easy in marketing nowadays to find that. And I'll talk more about cleansing later in one of the next steps. But We also want to make sure that we're using cold-pressed vegetable oils as a moisturizer. Guys, I have been using face oils, face oils for over 30 years. I don't use any creams and lotions and things like that. By the way, as a side note, creams and lotions, the way you make them is you get oil and water to mix. The way you get them to mix is you you blend them or you have a wax as a, a blending agent. That's it. So depending on, you know, what kind of oils and what kind of waters, whether you're using the floral waters or just plain old water, water, whichever, you still need to get them to to mix. And so people know of things like sorbeline cream, which is a mineral oil based. It's basically refined petroleum products. So refined kerosene and you stick it on your skin, like stop that shit. It's not good. So I'm a big fan of vegetable oil based moisturizers all year round. And in part two, I'm going to talk about all the different oils for all the different skin types. So just hang on. It's coming. I promise. Okay. Wait, another way to reduce free radical damage is with green tea. Now, I talked extensively about tea and how to utilize it properly in episode 11. If you have not listened to that one yet, go back and listen to it. So yes, you can take it internally. However, you can also brew it with the same rules that I talk about in episode 11 to use as like a a spritzer on your skin to be able to pull up those antioxidants. We also want to supplement with things like vitamins A, C, and E. And in this podcast, I'm going to talk about the foods that are rich in your vitamins A, C, and E. Another imbalance that shows in skin, which shows that free radical damage, which is really coming from the fact that you're low in vitamin A, is what's called hyperkeratosis. Now, the way you check for hyperkeratosis is you check the back of your arms. And if it feels like there's like these tiny little pimple, it's like that pimple raised kind of um, feeling, that's a sign of what's called hyperkeratosis. Um, We call it shark skin. And that shows that you're low in vitamin A. So that's another way to tell the impact of, you know, basically not having enough antioxidants in your diet. So check that out. That's quick, 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 do it now. Just feel the back of your arms. And if you're really rough, like tiny, tiny little pimples, 
guys, get some vitamin A rich foods, but listen to the rest of the podcast so you can get that list of vitamin A rich foods. We also want to be having plenty of fruit and veggies and close to nature, watching the amount of sun exposure that we get. And I'm a crazy surfer, but I'm going to talk also about what I do for sunscreens, but avoiding the sun damage through the 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. is the ideal. And we also want to use essential oils to shower aromatically, and I'll explain that shortly as well. But first off, I want to just, uh, just to give you a bit of a picture on what the skin is, okay? So before we go into the foods that are really good to it. So you've probably heard of acid and alkaline. So this is scale and the scale, you know, starts at number one, which is acidic, at, right all the way up to number 14, which is really alkaline. Now, healthy skin sits around 5.6 to 6.5. And I'm gonna talk very shortly about the acid mantle, which is our protective layer of our skin. So why is it so important to have our body sitting in that, that right acid alkaline kind of balance? Well, bottom line, it helps to keep all the bugs out. That's it. A healthy acid mantle protects us from that oxidative damage. And protecting your acid mantle is your cheapest antioxidant. And I'm going to talk all about these things now. And that starts with your vitamin A, your vitamin C, and your vitamin E rich foods. So here are some of my favorites, vitamin E rich foods. You just want organic where possible, close to nature, not being picked, you know, green and then stored for a year before you find it, which is so often nowadays with foods. It's terrible. I love that I grow so many, you know, yummy foods in my garden. And right at the moment, my mango tree, I harvested all the fruit last week and I'm eating the most delicious mangoes homegrown organic on the planet they are just out of this world and wonderfully mango is a food that's really rich in vitamin a cool but up the top of the list is kiwi fruit kiwi fruit guys so whether they're the green ones or the gold ones kiwi fruit are an excellent source of vitamin a also guava interesting i do so much work over in asia and guava is so extensively eaten it's insane and asians have such wonderful skin quality and clarity but they, they eat for purpose. They don't just eat, you know, for flavors and all that stuff. They eat for purpose. They know the value of foods like guava. Grapefruit's excellent. Like I said, mango, cantaloupe, which is rock melons. Dried apricots, but it's the shriveled up, look really bad looking dried apricots. It's not the big plump, bright orange ones that you'll buy in the supermarket because they've been sulfur dried. Not good. You want the yucky, prune, pruny, shriveled up kind of looking um, apricots to be able to get that benefit. Milk, because milk is generally fortified with vitamin A nowadays. And egg yolks, really good. So they're the foods that are the richest with vitamin A. But generally, if you're thinking fruits and veggies that are really bright orange in color, orange and yellow, they're also going to have, like carrots, they're going to have a vitamin A content as well. Now let's talk about vitamin C rich foods. The, at the top of the list is the acerola cherry. Um, it is Christmas time here at the moment in Australia, and I just had a bowl of cherries, uh, just regular cherries, but cherries are really rich. Kiwi fruit, guava, grapefruit, mango, pawpaw, pawpaw, okay? So the red pawpaw versus the yellow pawpaw is even better. Plums, pineapples, strawberries, melon. Now, I know when you're first thinking of vitamin C rich foods, you're thinking of things like, you know, oranges and lemons and limes, and they do have some, but all of these fruits have so much more, far better value nowadays. So what are some of my favorite vitamin E rich foods? Up the top of the list is sunflower seeds, but guys, it's gotta be raw sunflower seeds. Add a sprinkle to your salads. It's such an easy way to do it. Almonds, I've talked about all the benefits of almonds in so many podcasts, but it's gotta be the raw ones. So almonds are an excellent source of vitamin E. Again, papaya, papaya is pawpaw. And both the red and the yellow are great for that, but they're really cool. Dark green veggies, like things like your spinaches and your silver beet, really rich in vitamin E. Blueberries, nice. Excellent way to get a good source of, and it's berry season at the moment. I just thought, ooh, yeah, it's berry season right now here in Australia. There's so many around. It's so good to be able to just, just do it. Lunchtime, went out to my mulberry bush. And, you know, just eating fresh berries from the plant is amazing and so loaded in nutrients, guys. So step one is to include more antioxidant-rich foods 
and lifestyle habits to protect that acid mantle. That is your first line of defense, the protection. Step two is the elimination. Now, we can't make toxins go away, but we've got to be able to make sure that everything is kept mobilized all the time so that your body can do what it needs to do. And a healthy skin needs healthy cells. So what things make your cells healthy? Bottom line, oxygen, nutrients and water. We've already talked about a few foods, nutrients and water, and then the elimination of their wastes. That's it. Elimination is one of the biggest secrets to not just great skin, but to longevity in your health. So how do we eliminate wastes? Well, we've got our skin first. Now the skin is your biggest eliminating organ and one third of your body's toxins are eliminated through your skin. Now I know you were thinking it was your poos and peas. It's not. Your skin's bigger. Skin is one third of your elimination. Number two is lungs. Lungs, when we breathe out, we're eliminating toxins. Lungs are important. And then we come to your poos and peas. Your bowel is where we move any leftovers from your digestion. Just anything that isn't your body's not able to utilize is eliminated. And then your kidneys. Urine's produced by the filtering of your blood. What's really interesting is that your skin operates like a third kidney. So we really want to be able to just look after our skin because it is the biggest eliminating organ in our body. And interesting that, you know, skin is also the most vulnerable. It really, it is a tiny layer that protects us from leaking out and falling apart. It's like, it's crazy. This, this thing keeps us alive. Now, while I think of it, if you haven't listened to episode 12, where I talk about pimples, go back to it. If you haven't listened to episode two yet, where I talk about water, go back and listen to that one too. I just want to throw that in there because pimples, if toxins don't come out through your poos and peas, they come out of your skin as things like uh, pimples or even your psoriasis and eczemas and all those. So skin's important, guys. So how do you maximize your third kidney, which is your skin? Well, in my house, I have a sauna. I, I, you know, it is one of those little luxuries that I've grown. I'd rather have that in my house than buy some other dust collecting kind of shit that I don't need because I know the value in saunas. I have an infrared sauna, super easy, and I utilize it to the max. Steam baths are excellent if you've got access to a steam bath. Hot houses, any of those kind of things that are going to help you to sweat. Why? Because toxins are mobilized out through your skin. And I am an aromatherapist, so I am also a big, well, I'm just a big fan of bathing in general, really, but really a big fan of detoxifying aromatic baths. So I'll talk about essential oils later on and how you can do that. But I'm a big fan of nice hot baths, load them up with Epsom salts and essential oils to be able to, again, to sweat and facilitate the mobilization of those toxins. We've got to get them out of our body system. Really important. Now, in episode 26, if you haven't checked that one out yet, I talk about the lazy lymphatic system. Now, the lymphatic system is a, a system of one-way valves and it's the, the filter for our blood. And skin brushing, which is a really, really, really cool way to maximize your third kidney, which is your skin, uh, is, is one of the things that I do to keep my lymphatic system operating really well. Where I talk about the lymphatic system specifically and talk about how to do skin brushing properly. Being a naturopath and a herbalist, I'm also a big fan of herbal tonics. Uh, burdock root is a wonderful herb that works as an anti-inflammatory and it's antibacterial and it's excellent for helping to, again, clean skin from the inside. Amazing herb. And I use it. I take it regularly. It's within my kind of cleansing tonic that I take. I'll chuck a link in the, the show notes so you can check that out if you're interested. But there's so many herbs that are also excellent for helping your body to mobilize toxins. Now, step three is about renewing your skin cells. So you've done the protection, you've done the elimination. Now we want to give our skin every bit of good juice to be able to really renew itself because your skin's actually renewing itself about every 28 days. Yes, you shed skin cells about every 28 days. So you want to do everything so that your body is able to turn over those skin cells and be renewed and fresh and all wonderful um, in the system that it's meant to do it. So the more you can do to help take the pressure off your body, the better that works. So here's an easy visual. If you're a visual like me, I love visuals. 
imagine your skin is like a brick wall. Okay. Now the bricks are like your skin cells and your body makes skin cement from essential fatty acids, the good fats in our diet. And the cement holds the bricks together. That's it. So just like a brick wall, if you've got strong cement and good bricks, the, the wall is solid and it's strong and it just, it will, you know, it can defend whatever you've built the wall for or protect, look after whatever you've built the wall for. But if you go and remove too much cement, think about it, you weaken the wall. Now, people, if you're, if you're using too many, you know, scrubs and chemical peels and all those kind of things all the time, too often, they're like using a jackhammer on that wall and you absolutely weaken the integrity of your skin because you, you literally chip out the skin cement. So remember the skin cement comes from your good essential fatty acids. We need the good fats in our diet. And my favorite is flaxseed oil, but I'll talk more about foods and things again in the next episode. So what do you do? What do you do from a renewing your skin cells kind of process? Well, one, don't go using chemical peels or too many scrubs too often. That's it. Imagine next time you do it, if you're scrubbing your face, just think, wow, I'm washing out all that cement, which means the skin cells slough off, you know, fall away faster and you're doing more damage to the skin. You want that integrity to stay there. I like things like pawpaw, get a fresh pawpaw or kiwi fruit or pineapple because they're all rich in the enzymes that work as wonderful exfoliants. But the difference is it's like you want you want to kind of cut the fruit, mash it up and, and just slop it all over your skin, leave it on there for 15, 15, 20 minutes, which is the amount of time that those enzymes are active and then wash off your face. It is gentle. You're, you're getting the antioxidant kind of properties of those fruits at the same time and they work well. The only thing is I talked about in a previous episode, once you cut the fruit, the antioxidant activity and the enzyme activity is diminishing. And you've got like about a 20 minute window to take advantage of that. So if you use a half a pawpaw uh, or half a pineapple for a face exfoliation today and want to use the rest tomorrow, you won't get the benefit. So the perfect fruit is kiwi fruit, guys. Kiwi fruit are so simple and easy. So if you are the kind of person who likes to, you know, do regular cleansing scrubs, all those kind of things, think about using a natural base exfoliant like kiwi fruit or pawpaw or pineapple. So guys, I've talked about so far how to protect your skin, how to eliminate the toxins that are taxing your skin and how to renew your skin cells. In the next episode, I'm going to talk about how to feed your skin from the inside and also all the different essential oils and what are the best ones for your skin type. So make sure you hang around for that one. Today's healthy life hack, guys, is to go to the show notes. Go to the show notes at www.healthylifehacks.com.au and review those points that I've put there because I've kind of covered a lot of information fast. Go there and see what your focus points are. Don't try and do it all at once. Pick one point from each of those three points and bring them into a new habit and start seeing how your skin loves the new attention that you're giving to it. I want to thank you for being here today. If you enjoyed my podcast, please let me know by leaving a review where you're listening in from. Every month, I draw one lucky person who leaves a review to have a free one-hour consultation with me. If you would like to receive a free copy of my Feed Your Body ebook, simply click the link in the comments below and join my newsletter and we will get that free ebook sent to you. I welcome your emails and you can write to me at podcast at healthylifehacks.com.au. Until next time, remember when it comes to life, live it, love it and get on with it.